Ooh, we'll come back. Call on line three. Is that a bad thing? I changed the number after Frankie. He's the oh, one that knows it. Frankie's dead. Is he? Imagined all that. So Did you? The call, then? What the fuck? Got a mash. Hell yeah, we take that call. Who is it? Hello? He will die if you let him. Frankie? The boy. The order you do things is important. I I've seen them all. Is this a prank? Frankie's dead. Who is this? Listen, just listen. She will lie to you. She will get away. She will kill the boy. You can't change that. What are we supposed to do? I don't have the lines between the dots. I just see the final picture. I don't like that pose. Me neither. And here's Yvette on line two. I love your show. Thanks, Yvette. I love your accent. What's your question? My question is, do you care about people? That's a strange question. It's an AMA, Munro. Ask me anything literally means ask me anything. Yeah, I know. But do we care about people? Yes, of course. Speak for yourself, Munro. I'm an animal lover myself. So you don't care about people? No, I do care about people, just I care about animals more. So you care about animals more than people? Present company excluded, of course. So that's a... Wait one moment, Yvette. So if I was crossing the road at the same time as a cute bunny, and you could only swerve and save one of us, you would choose the bunny. I'd save you, obviously. Well, that's reassuring. I said I'd save you. Then how long did you have to think about it? I like to consider things. Well, you have a Didn't take me that long. Well, I wasn't timing it. Fine. Save me or cat. You. Oh, how long was that? Sorry. Come on, Paul, you're making me look bad. You should have. I'm not a big cat fan. Oh. Does that answer your question, Yvette? Yes, I think so. I do have another dilemma. Maybe we can help, Yvette. I'd rather not stay on air. That's all right. Happy to help. It's about time for a short break anyway. Stay on the line, Yvette. We'll be back in five minutes to answer more of your AMA questions. Until then, here's something slightly more interesting instead. We're off. Yvette? I've got a hostage. Eh? <coughs> a hostage? He's a boy from August I. Oh, shit. Why is he a hostage, Yvette? I had a crush on him. But he turned out to be unpleasant. So you kidnapped him? No. I talked to Frank. Is he okay, Yvette? Not really. He has not woken up yet. But now that I've spoken to you, I'm probably just going to let him die. I like animals more than people anyway. Like Paul. Yvette, I was joking with Monroe. Thank you for your did you get the number? No, it's withheld. Maybe she was joking. We should call the police just in case. Tell them what was said. Really? I'm not sure. Why aren't you sure? I don't trust August police. They're the police. Exactly. We don't even know who's been kidnapped. Monroe says a cab. We do? Do you even listen to yourself reading the August update? Not really. I normally drift off. You drift off? I imagine myself at the opera. I'm on stage, and there's this beautiful young lady in the front row. But she's dressed like a cat. Okay. Let's circle back to that another day. So, what are you saying? We work the case ourselves. That boy could get hurt. Not if we hurry up. 
Yesterday in the August update, you said that Joe Watson fell missing. Ah, yes, I remember. He'd gone to a friend's house after school and hadn't come back. What are the odds that Yvette has got Joe hostage? Almost as high as Yvette not being her actual name. I know the headmistress from the high school. Maybe we should talk to her. Or maybe the parents. They asked for the story to be run. Don't you want to go back to school? You clearly had a better childhood than I did. I still have my cheerleading outfit. That's settled then. Let's talk to the headmistress first. Well, I'm convinced. What's her name? Dallas Umber. That's a strange name. She's a strange woman. Take a seat, both of you. Whilst it's admirable that you're returning to complete your education, you're a little old for this institution. Sorry, you're mistaken. I have a degree in cryptozoology. That's not a real degree. It's okay, Paul. She's messing with us. Really? Yes. I'm eccentric. Can't you tell? <laughs> uh, well, we're here about... She Joseph warned us Watson. about... And there was I thinking I was going to be on the radio. Joseph is a pupil here, though, right? He certainly is. Head boy and heartbreaker. Heartbreaker? <laughs> He's a good-looking lad. Generous nature. Always helping people. Any idea where he could have gone? Oh, probably some young lady's house whose parents are away. He went missing yesterday, and we had a caller on Radio August who said they'd kidnapped him. Kidnapped? Oh, sounds a bit far-fetched. We're looking for him, so anything you can tell us would be useful. Oh, you'd be better off talking to his form tutor, Miss Clay, but... How was Joe doing at school? He was doing as well as he could for a boy. For a boy. Oh, boys aren't as clever as girls, academically, though. They don't apply themselves enough, especially in mixed sex schools. Is this a mixed sex? Too much going on downstairs. Yes, yes, it is. Was Joe being bullied by anyone? No. Joe's a sporty type. Not sure he'd be easily pushed around. Do you know any pupils called Yvette? Not recently. Why are you looking for someone called Yvette? It's the name of a kidnap. And by recent, you mean? Well, I was at school with an Yvette, but that was many moons ago. Not in August. From country, actually. Well, we should be off now. Here's my number, if Joe turns up, or if you think of any place he might be. Thank you, Mrs. Amber. It's Miss Umber. Miss Umber. You too. Take care. August is not the town it used to be. What's our next move, Monroe? Who did she say Joe's teacher was again? Miss Clay. If we can find her address, we should visit her. I think she's staying at the guest house. Why do you think that? I saw a bill on Miss Amber's desk. Unless they've kidnapped him, I'm not sure how much help they'll be. Worth a try. Sure. It's not like Frankie told us to hurry up or anything. news about Joe. Is Joe still missing? Yeah, missing. Since yesterday. We thought it was a prank, but we had a caller on the radio, a girl. She said she was holding Joe hostage. Live on the radio? No. We were off air. Good. Have you told the police? We um, thought that should be your decision. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Are you going to call the police then? I'll have to think about it. It's not always a straightforward decision, Paul. Although the police are supposed to be equipped for this sort of thing. Yeah, it's supposedly. Bad. I've got an early start, and I'd like to have some thinking time of my own. 
We'd still like to ask you some questions, if that's okay, Mr. Watts. Whatever you need. Are you okay, Mr. Watts? Not really. My son is missing and I'm wasting time talking to you. We're just trying to help, but we can leave it to you and the police. You didn't call the police, did you? We didn't. Good. Good. Have you been asked for a ransom, Mr. Watts? We are not going to tell the police. Just before you came here, she called. She said if I told the police, she'd kill Joe. What did she want? Fifty thousand. So it's looking more likely this is a kidnapping. I don't want to tell the police yet. I just need some time to work out what to do. We're looking into it as well. And if we hear anything, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. What do you need from me? Can you tell us a bit about Joe? He's good. He is good. He did a marathon last month to raise money for Dorothy May. Dorothy May? Yeah, she's um, an 80-year-old with an acoustic aroma. He helped her with it. He mows the lawns for the old folks around here for free. He was really good. Any reason someone might want to hurt him? I've been thinking about this over and over again, and I just can't think of anyone who would. Is this Joe? Yeah, that's Joe. Can we take this? I'd rather you didn't. That's the only one I've got. Sorry. Of course. I have only one place left to go now. You think his dad killed him? You think Joe's dead? If Joe is dead, I bet his dad killed him. He's just upset. Why isn't he out looking for Joe himself? He's probably over the limit. He didn't seem that drunk. Functioning alcoholic. I tried that on for a while. Really? We haven't got time. Come on. Sorry, yes. Uh, what's next? I think we should go to the guest house now. You're right. Possibly should have done that first. I'm gonna talk to Miss Gallagher. You find Miss Clay. Hello? It's Alice. Alice Monroe? From the radio. Yeah, from the radio. What brings you here, Miss Monroe? One of your guests, actually. Well, I'm happy to chat, but you will need to help me strip. Oh. Okay. Meant the furniture. The bed. Yes. Of course. We need to strip the bed. I do it at home. I'm assuming this is about Miss Clay. She is my only guest. Yes, the school teacher. One of her pupils has gone missing. Well, being held hostage, actually. Hostage? We had a caller on the radio. Someone calling themselves Yvette said that they'd taken this boy, Joe Watts, hostage. Watts? Oh, yes. 
the family's been in August for a long time. They manufacture and sell fireworks, of all things. I love fireworks. Ghastly things. Not metal in our drinking water. Makes my thyroid throb just thinking about it. They're fun though, right? If you're an unethical hedonist. I will Google that when I get home. Do. Did you ever meet Joe Watts? Never met him. August High is a grammar school though, isn't it? So it's hard to tell what I'm picking. He's clever enough or rich enough to be. Kind of adds to the fun though. And the vet? The vet. Yes, I did have an vet stay here last year. I think her family were just passing through though. Her mother was an electrical engineer for a big television company. She did fix my reception though. I think that's her. Was she Britishy? Oh yes, Britishy. Britishy. That quintessential accent of the United Kingdom. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. It's okay, Miss Munro. I'm just teasing you. No, she was uh, Russian. Yvette had a French accent. Hmm. Can you think of anything that might help? Please give me a call at the radio station. Surely you want me to call the police if I notice anything. I'd rather you called us first, if that's okay. Do the police know what's going on? His dad doesn't want the police to know. Very well, then. I shall do as I'm told. Thank you. I know we're going to find him. Hello? Yes, I'd like uh -oh. to report a kidnapping, please. Well, I didn't get much out of Miss Clay. She said Joe was a litterbug. So she's an eco-warrior? Yes. I wish we could have recycled our meeting, actually. How was Miss Gallagher? Kind of dominant. Hmm. I liked her. Maybe I shouldn't let you hang around with other redheads. Maybe you shouldn't. Let's circle back to this later. Did she say anything useful at all about Joe? She said Joe's parents sold fireworks. Hmm, I suppose that could be useful. Anything else? She said the only event she knew was Russian, and an electrical engineer. So I'm guessing that's not our event. Did she say anything about Miss Clay? Not really. I probably should have asked more questions. I got distracted. Clearly. Seems we're out of leads. I'm still up for visiting the headmistress again. We could drill Miss Gallagher some more. Give it up, Alice. I'm trying. The headmistress, then? Miss Gallagher? Miss Gallagher. You can go on your own if you want to talk to Miss Gallagher again. Okay, bye. I see. I suppose I should visit Miss Clay, then. Monroe. Yes. How did you know? I have ears and a gravel driveway. And I saw your reflection in the window. <laughs> We've hit a dead end with Joe. Oh dear. Want to drive? Sure. Hey, you're quite handy, aren't you? I have my uses. I wish you'd come for a chat earlier. I was laying screed in the garage. Screed? Cement flooring. Wish I'd got the self-leveling stuff now. <laughs> Hiding bodies. <laughs> Don't be silly. If I was going to do that, I'd use my industrial grade meat mixer. I probably shouldn't eat here. Oh no, you should. We've always got plenty of fresh meat in the freezer. Kurt's a running a guest house, I guess. Talk to Wes Marie Bolton. Who? Haven't even heard that name. 
Oh, don't worry about that. Don't you have your dishwasher anyway? I did. He's under the screed. <laughs> I was laughing and I then you were not laughing. Joking or not. I'd go see where's Marie. Seventeen Hunger Lane. Perhaps Joe was one of the missing she talked about. Let's hope not. I don't have a definite address, but this can just be all her leading me to a trap. About anything, unless it's an eco issue. Maybe you're just not prodding her in the right places. You're welcome to talk to her, too. We don't have time, Paul. The good news is Miss Gallagher gave me a name. Wes Marie Bolton. Excellent. And the address to go with? Hunger Lane. Off Beaconsfield Drive. I know it. Let's go. People don't normally want to hear what I have to say. We do. We want to hear about Joe Watts. If I tell you what I think, I'll topple my meds. Well, we don't want to get you in trouble. Just tell us what you can. Don't be silly, Pearl. We're not going to tell anyone. You can tell us anything. It's okay. You can trust us. We're from the radio. This after school club green fly. I was in it. She made us make a list of those with the most environmental impact in our class. I did it. It was me. I made the list. Joe was third on it and the third person to go missing. You have to help and you need to. It's okay. We're gonna help. You just need to take a breath. Love them in the woods at Hell Park. You have to hurry. She'll kill him if they don't pay. What does she want with the money? If they pay, she donates the money to charity. It's gone too far. And what if they don't pay? I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary. What did you see, Westmary? Miss Clay. She was turning him into trees. I'll turn you into a fucking tree. Captain Planet, motherfucker. A dryad. A what now? A dryad. Someone who's part human, part tree. We need to go. How, Park? Yeah. Where's Marie? Where's Marie? You did good. We're gonna save Joe. You wait here, and we'll be back. Oh, this looks cool. We took too long. Go. Are we too late? He's alive. Only oh. just. We need to get him out of here. Miss Clay? No, she's not here. You're safe. She's a tree. It's okay, Joe. We're going to get you home. Yo, ho. Monroe, we have a fan. I'm just trying to untie you, Joe. Can you, can you stand up for me? Monroe, help me. <laughs> Where is she right now? It's okay. It's okay. I can walk. Steady. I guess not. Miss Clay did this. She kidnapped you. Yeah. After school. 
in her car. You got into her car? She offered me a lift. Didn't think I'd end up being tied to a tree. How long have you been out here, Joe? Just today. She said this was the end. Who? I was blindfolded. Was it Miss Clay? No. It, it was a French girl. You bet. A French girl was helping Miss Clay. Let's get you home. <sighs> Two dryads? Joe's sleeping. The important thing is that he's safe. And I'm 50,000 poorer. I'm sorry. I'm glad he's back. Thank you for getting to him so quickly. We didn't know you paid the ransom. Well, I did. They said he'd be in the woods. Did Joe say anything about who kidnapped him? He said it was his teacher, Miss Clay. Nothing about Yvette? There was a French girl that was helping her. He didn't see her. I'm just glad he's home. Do you think they'll catch Miss Clay? Only if she wants to be caught. Do you think Joe was ever in any real danger? Probably. There's still two missing students. I thought environmentalists loved the planet, including all the humans on it. I think most of them do. They're always fanatics, Monroe, in everything. Some people like plants more than people. Tree tomorrow, in our yard. Maybe we should look into solar panels. Can we even afford next month's rent? It's not next month yet. Do you think the whistle means anything? I blew one and couldn't hear anything. It's some kind of dog whistle. We never found out who Yvette was either. Some things will always remain a mystery. Oh no. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. We have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves. Mm. Monroe, are you ready to meet mm. your past self? I was born ready. I'm Elizabeth. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Dark Knights. With Pearl and Monroe. That's the set from the, uh, the game I didn't play. Should I have done that first? Since it all takes place in the same universe, anyway. We took Frankie's call, saved Monroe. Chose to solve the case by herself, yeah. Visited Joe's school first. I should know 75% of snitches. He chose to see Violet with Monroe. Oh, Violet dry up. We oh. let Monroe deal with Westmary. And to keep Joe on his feet. Okay, we did good then. We did keep up with him. I thought that was let him go. I was like, no, 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 no. Alright, next episode. Yeah it's, the yeah, it's the couch in the green room I remember from Dr. Decker. But again, it's a lot of like... A lot of, like, asking questions and a lot of missables. I mean, they're probably missable with this, too, but I'm just, like, going through it. You see me only making, like, choices and letting the game itself, like, play out rather than just, you know. When I was playing that by myself, and I was like, oh, uh, just by myself I was playing, I'm like, ah, not for me. I'm getting bored. <laughs> It's just the pacing is all. Dark nights. With Pearl and Monroe. Ch -ch 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 changes
Maybe we should have a safe word. If you're worried. I'm worried I won't like it. Then we should definitely have it. What do you think, Miss Baratsky? It's Madame. I'm sorry, Madame Baratsky. <clears throat> you must feel relaxed. So if a safe word would help, then yes. What should it be? Clown. Thanks, Raspy. Clown? Oh, I didn't know that was the word over there. That's what Paul calls him. It's how he talks. Oh. Taters, everyone. Raspy. And we're live. Could be sexy, could be creepy, could be well, column A and B. As promised, listeners, we have a special treat for you tonight. Madame Baratsky is a past life regression therapist who claims to have helped hundreds of clients discover their previous selves, from ancient Egyptian concubines to Cold War spies. Welcome, Madame Baratsky. Thank you for having me. And of course, it wouldn't be our show without my better and more beautiful half. Say hello, Monroe. Hello, Monroe. Monroe has bravely volunteered to be put to sleep by Madame Baratsky this evening. You make it sound like euthanasia. She's going to wake you up again. Aren't you? Of course. Remind me again why you couldn't do it, Poe? Oh, dodgy me. In just a moment, Madame Baratsky will put Monroe into a trance. I prefer hypnotic state. Into a hypnotic state. And we'll ask her to describe what she's seen. Later on, we'll be taking your calls. Have you lived before? Do you remember any past lives? Or is it all just a money-making racket? <coughs> <laughs> She's in the room. Yes, Bo? Are you ready to meet your past self? I was born ready. Let's hope you were reborn ready. This guy thinks he but sounds all cool, but yeah, he can easily become school in summertime. Please relax. Close your eyes. I've been picking Monroe on everything. <laughs> Listen to nothing else. Keep my voice. <sighs> Madame Baratsky has started the regression process. <clears throat> Focus on your arms. Feel how heavy they are. Feel them sink into the chair and pull you into the deep, deep dark. Let the darkness consume you. Good. She is fully relaxed and suggestive. Now you have crossed into a life you have lived before. Do you remember who you are? Yes. Monroe says she can remember a previous life. Shh. Do not rush. Let the world come to you. Let it reveal itself. She telling you to take a to take a powder or something? Let the world envelop you. Step into the world and become your former self. Now tell me what you see. I guess I could have played a trick on her and given her coffee instead. <laughs> yeah, this is the couch from the Dr. Decker game. Yeah, it's a lot less waiting around, just asking questions, gotta type stuff in and stuff. You know, try for like asking like 400 questions or something. That's what you were going to ask, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yes. Being right. It's a gift and a burden. Where's Dr. Decker? You don't know, do you? It's okay. I was just being polite. It's nice to see a new face. What did he tell you about me? Relationships are hard, especially with my condition. Let's play a game, Doctor. Okay. You're very accommodating for a therapist. You think of something, then I'll get it. triangle. A love triangle, perhaps. Don't say anything. And you haven't said anything since you arrived. Do you believe me now? That I can read your mind? Good. You believe me? I lose a lot of friends right about now. Something happened at work. The dry cleaners in town. I can't switch it off. You just read everybody's mind? As soon as I lock eyes with a person, I get their thoughts. I'd like to be a brain surgeon, Does but work? I didn't apply myself enough. I am pretty nimble with an iron, though. Anyway, there's this guy who walks in with a suit. It's got a stain on the trousers, meaning the zipper. And all he's thinking when he drops them off is, Sharon can't pick these up, Sharon can't pick these up. So he starts screaming at me that he needs the hour service or he'll have me fired. So I call the manager. What's he do or she? My manager is also called Sharon. So it gets a bit confusing. I call Sharon over anyway. Sharon! Sharon! This guy's face is a picture. But he's holding it together. Sharon comes over preoccupied. She's thinking about the washing machines. She is the manager, so she normally does that, but this time was different. She was thinking about Nisha. Spinning away in one of them. The dry cleaning machines are big. You can fit someone in quite easily. You could probably fit a small person into a normal washing machine, actually, if they really tried. Anyway, the store manager hears shouting and comes over. The customer, let's call him Ed, says that we shouldn't be advertising something we can't deliver. Says he's a lawyer and he'll sue us. The store manager, whose name I intentionally forget, says he'll sort it out. Sharon, in the meantime, has gone ashen. I lock onto Sharon's eyes, and I see it again. Nisha, spinning away in a machine. At this point, I'm guessing Sharon has a fantasy about killing her. Ed finally gives in, throws his suit at me, and leaves. The manager looks at me and says, can you work your magic hands over his trousers? He's thinking of me topless, in a hot tub, but with way bigger breasts. And Don't you point to that camera. Some other things I'd rather not remember. Knowing people's thoughts eats your soul. I 
don't know what the first thing. I'll go with the trousers. Ed's trousers have the stain. Keep up, Doctor. Anyway, I take it round back to start working on it. And that's when I see her. Misha. Like a rag doll in a hurricane. Just spinning inside this big machine. Her face smashing against glass and metal. Blood pouring out of every opening. She's a mess. We go to the dry cleaners now and you stop this? Jewelry. A ring, maybe. Yes. A ring. Good. I need you to get it for me. Do you understand? I understand. Well, this is fascinating, August. We'll be back with more of Monroe's past life in just a moment. What's going on? I'm helping Ellis uncover her past. Why does she need to get this ring? Oh, it's just a technique I use. I think you should bring her back now. It would be dangerous at this point. Then do it at whatever point it won't be. Quiet. I'm trying to concentrate. Back into the creepy couch. Dryer. They closed down the store for a while so the real cleaners could come in. They got rid of all the blood. It wasn't just blood. Her skull had split open and was grating against the metal drum. Some of her teeth. Sorry, Doctor. What did you want to know? Yeah. Dry cleaning machines have huge locks. There's no way of shutting yourself in. You really have to get a friend to help. Or manager. Perchloroethylene. It's what they use in dry cleaning machines. But Misha didn't drown. The spin cycle broke her spinal cord. So she was paralyzed for a few minutes while her face mashed into everything. Shock probably got her first. Sharon's fingerprints were the only ones on the machine. Actually, hers and Misha's. The police thought she'd struggled against the machine trying to fight Sharon. Nobody heard anything though. Oh, these are like a. Uh... Sharon's in a psychiatric hospital now. I guess that didn't get questions here. They arrested Sharon for Misha's murder. Sentenced to 18 years. One for each of Misha's. Is that enough? Maybe murder should be punishable by death. People don't change, do they? They just get worse. I did see Sharon once after the trial. She didn't talk. But in her head, all I could see was Nisha going round and round. Her mind was literally stuck like a broken record. I watched the trial from the gallery. Not many people made eye contact with me, but Sharon did. She wanted to die. Really die. 
I don't think she killed Misha. Sharon's defense. She said Jarrett killed Misha. The Umbrella Man. Jarrett's the Umbrella Man. It's a nickname. We were on a work do and it started raining and then Jarrett pulls out this tiny umbrella out of nowhere and then gets handsy with any girl stupid enough to duck under it. Hence, Umbrella Man. Sharon's fingerprints were all over the machines. And her husband was having sex with Misha. That's all the jury needed. Nobody saw her do it, though. She just didn't have a good enough lawyer. People with money get away with murder all the time, though. Don't they? Is there anything rich people can't buy? Misha worked for Sharon as a housemaid. That's how she met her husband. It's so cliché. Misha was desperate for money, and he was desperate for attention. I never told anyone this, but... Misha charged Sharon's husband for sex. I mean, she said she would have done it anyway, but since there was a chance of getting paid... I don't think Sharon knew. Would you pay someone to have sex with you, Doctor? That's hard, Bess. People pay people to have sex with them all the time. Just not with money. They do it expecting love, or opportunity, time, companionship, or... orgasms. Misha was good at cleaning. What can I say? Often I'd go to the back of the machines to move my lint trays out and Misha was there with Jared, hoovering away already. Now we get to this. Misha kissed me once, so... I slapped her. We were in the machine room. She said she'd got something in her eye and would I take a look? So I did. Her irises were lovely and big, dilated. And while I was looking, she just kissed me. But her mind, it was beautiful, shimmering. And then when she kissed me, it, it all fell away. All that was left was shame, fear, repulsion. So I slapped her. What did Nisha think about? <sighs> Nisha thought about Jared a lot. She hated him, but she also wanted to sleep with him at the same time. It's pretty common. I'm sure there's an interesting scientific term for it. Yeah. Angry <laughs> sex. Oh. All angry sex. I'd probably take either right now. Umbrella Man? I told you about the Umbrella Man. She hated him. But in a lady doth protest too much kind of way. Maybe he killed her. Nisha was asking for it, wasn't she? I mean, if your partner's cheating on you, you murder their fling, right? Exactly. She'd have killed her husband for sure. Why start with Nisha? It doesn't make any sense. I think Jared killed Nisha. I'm starting to think that myself. I saw Nisha's body in the machine. 
her eyes were still open, crying blood. When I looked into them, there was peace. Nothing else. Just peace. Coffee break? A tea break. I'm allergic to nuts. Is this definitely normal milk? Wait, which one am I picking? Is it? The milk bit funny? Safety first. Maybe it's on the turn. Well, don't drink it! <coughs> Crown. Monroe, you're back. Is it? Snap her out of it. She can't hear you. What's wrong with her? You can go in after her. Just sit down, please. If he goes in, how's he gonna get out? How can I go in after her? I'd have to get in her brain. I'm very good at what I do. Sleep. You weren't kidding. There's a good boy. It's time for Bo to sit on the couch. He is on the couch now. I oh know she's back. And this is Do you want to see my ring? What? I don't remember wearing one. Shall I take it off? Maybe later. So wait. Oh, the umbrella man's the new one. Jared, the Umbrella Man. I'm sorry, but our time is up in more ways than one. It's not a therapy thing. <laughs> but it'd be what it'd be. I can't believe they tied this in here of all games. I kind of feel bad about going back, but I'm just sitting here just listening. I'm kind of like, ugh. I'm going to struggle a little bit, to be honest. But hey. Not quite done with uh, episode four yet. Uh, Poe's gone in. Can we? Well, yeah, Poe. I almost said Monroe. He came in. Will we bring it out? I'll have to figure that out all out next time on Let's Play Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe.